afternoon everybody the most challenging session of the day when you are about to break for the lunch and you also know that some people are having lunch um so please bear with us and another disclaimer is that we are here just to share our own experiences not to claim that we know more than what you know so aap usi tarike se hi treat kare hamari baat ko bhi discussion generate karne ke liye hum log hain um to start the sessions i i would start from um abhimanyu ji ki <clears throat> why these collectivized collectives needed uh, at the first place or uh, what is it that we are trying to address by having these collectives at the grassroots in terms of either ssgs or the fpos or the cooperatives whatever name you want to call them so mere sare ek साथ ही जो भी फील्ड में एक्सपीरियंसेस हुए हैं उनके बारे में थोड़ा आप शेयर करें प्लीज गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबॉडी सो व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज इन फैक्ट आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर आवर एग्जिस्टिंग यू नो प्रोजेक्ट यू नो व्हिच इज ऑन गोइंग फ्रॉम लास्ट फोर इयर्स ओके सो इट्स अ लाइफ प्रोजेक्ट फ्रॉम लास्ट फोर ईयर्स सो दिस इज प्रोजेक्ट विच यू नो बेनिफिटिंग ऑलमोस्ट टेन थाउजेंड वुमेन फार्मर्स इन और ट्राइबल वुमेन फार्मर्स you know in jharkhand chatisgarh orissa west bengal okay so when we started the project the objective was very simple to double the income of the farmers okay now how to do it so when we did a study what we found that uh, the biggest challenge was water although they have land but irrigation was the biggest challenge because of the topography of the land they have the rivers nearby their like you know farms but you know they are not able to irrigate okay so we conceptualized a project where we wanted to use solar irrigation set up solar irrigation around 500 of them benefiting like you know around 5000 uh, 10000 of uh, these farmer families so but now what is the big challenge is how to you know set up this one how to who will manage it okay and when you are thinking about increasing the farmer's income it is not about irrigation is just one part of it we need to think about training them modern agriculture practices you know and then selling you know, linking them the market to the market you know so that they will be able to sell their produce and if you don't think all these things you know at the beginning you know the project will not be successful so we conceptualize project and the most important part is see we committed around only 25% of the funding to our ngo partner pradhan and we said we will do only this project if you are able to raise another almost let's say 70 to 80% and they said that 20% they will be like you know collecting from the community itself because if you don't have community ownership the project believe me it is not sustainable we have done that in our previous projects where community didn't pay anything and it all failed so the first so they have chosen those villages in fact it took long time to identify those villages because we will only maybe you know you have to go to three villages and after doing the meeting maybe only one village they will be like agree so we did that and this also you know as a part of this project we th like you know we thought of training this women about modern agriculture practices creating sugs because there are already ssgs you know so you know the ssgs were there but this 20 farmers you know who will be a part or who will be owning this uh, you know solar irrigation pump you know or who will be using this irrigations okay so we make them a group they will have a specific account you know so that whatever the, let's say the income which will be generated by usage of this solar irrigation pump because even after installation they have to pay usage fees because if you don't uh, like you know collect the usage fee how this installation is going to run so all this thing has been done so as in today close to 400 solar irrigation pump has been installed you know installed there around uh, let's say you know each is around like you know benefiting 20 so around uh, 8000 farmers are benefited and after 2 years we did an impact assessment study you know the results are really phenomenal it has in fact increased their income more than two times because they are able to now raise three crops including exotic vegetables like broccoli capsicum and all those things okay and then we have also linked to the market you know so that they are able to sell their produce at the door street itself yeah so that's what we are doing so i i will definitely come back to you uh, for, for understanding sure. the details about how you invested into existing people's institution and also in the whole ecosystem 
So, Akhila ji, would you like to uh, share your experiences on the um, sides of uh, collectivization or industry's uh, experiences? Yeah. So, uh, industry has uh, been in existence for over 20 years now. And uh, we have experimented on multiple models. Uh, models which are uh, associated to uh, building only entrepreneurs and then entrepreneurs then uh, reverse, you know, integrating them to artisanal and artisanal communities. Uh, we've fundamentally over a period of time, cutting the long story short, we have realized that uh, we need to be in the intersection of equity, uh, that all artisanal communities and all producers should have equal stake and equal uh, ownership in whatever they are doing. Uh, that is equity. Gender playing a very critical role. Uh, we realize that uh, building on the SSG model, which the government has spent eons of time and effort and energy uh, into building these women into SSG groups, they already know how to work together. They already know how to engage together. So building on that model will make our implementation patterns far more simpler and easier. Uh, they are eligible to take loans. We are giving them opportunities to raise livelihoods to make sure that those loans are repaid. So women become a uh, very critical role. And keeping the market perspective in mind, we have been into conscious consumption. So climate plays a very important role in whatever we do. So in terms of our products which, we make, which the women make are all natural fiber based products or off-farm based products or uh, uh, products which are using sustainable, uh, you know, agriculture-based uh, engagement. So we work even with reverse integration into FPOs. So uh, actually, we fall into the intersection of equity, women, and livelihoods. Uh, and over years, we have realized that uh, our model works best when we integrate and collectivize uh, women, because we basically work in the creative manufacturing place. So the more number of hands, the more amount of production. More amount of production, more uh, they can move up the value chain. If they make less number of products, they can sell to retail markets. Uh, if they make more, they can uh, sell to national markets. But if they are large, they can sell to international markets. So our women in Tamil Nadu, for example, sell to IKEA worldwide. They sell to Carford, they sell to Caravan. We are in advanced talks with uh, Amazon. So, and we also built an own uh, uh, e-commerce based platform which is 100% owned by the producers themselves which they can go directly to consumers during this COVID time. So, this is most effective only when they coll are collectivized, they have a larger uh, capability of engaging and they are also in a position to take loans. Businesses are able to, uh, you know, get loans for their businesses and then we handhold them through the entire exercise on how do you leverage these various already existing uh, ecosystemic support oh, systems right. which are created right. by the government, by the farm, uh, by the, you know, uh, ecosystem players, ecosystemic players like y'all, leverage these various aspects to become better. So that's what we So, do. So very interesting that um, you shared about the communitization of the whole value chain. Yes. So we would like to learn more about in the second round. Um, I welcome Prashanji to share his experiences on creating this platform commons. Uh, which may sound a little, you know, tacky thing, but how technology is also helping the smallholder farmers um, to, to address some of the issues. So, please. Uh, thank you, Sanjay ji. So, uh, I will talk about three things uh, in collectivization. In, so, first, I'll talk about digital collectives and what for us collectivization really means what the opportunities are today out there in terms of technology helping people come together. Second thing I'd like to talk about is what we've learned in keeping things simple, small and simple, and how small, many smalls can really come together and become big. So we'd like to give you some examples on how we've approached. And a third thing we will like to talk about, the role of ecosystems and how we've approached that. So let's start with the basis, the collective itself. Now, in this whole SHG, FPO world, etc., what we realize that the moment the group size of any you know, human beings coming together increases, 
beyond 5, 10, 20, power dynamics come in. Now, not only power dynamics, also the ability to manage, uh, to lead a group of 1,000 farmers is not easy. If today I was the CEO of an FPO of 1,000 farmers, I would be sweating cold sweat every night. It's not easy to manage 1,000 people business, especially such a complex business. So then we also found in experiences that when groups become too large, there'll be some 5, 10 farmers fight them. You know, they start exercising undue power. There's a lot of misappropriation sometimes happens. So what we said is that can we not reimagine collectives as people coming together, small groups of people coming together. I may or may not be a registered FPO. On a tech platform, imagine if your WhatsApp group is a collective. Right? Of course, so now there's some other app in which you've come together, 20 of you, 10 of you, and you are running a mustard oil processing unit in a village. Uh, and that 10 people need to come together if they have to run this because it's difficult financially as well as from a complexity wise for one person to run that unit. Or you're running one ate ki chakki. Right? So you're making millet flour, bajre ka aata bana rahe aap. So and we said that's very, very important for people to get into this manufacturing because that's where the money is. In selling raw commodities, you hardly get 12, 13, 15% of the consumer's share of revenue. So small groups need to come together. But then the finances and the settlement of all of that can be automated. So when one bottle of mustard sells, the moment that money comes on the platform, it doesn't hit the FPO bank account. It is auto split into the member farmers or the members of that community. Um, and so on and so forth. A whole lot of management of finances, management of people's product, access to the market. We are able to do that with a five member, 10 member group and technology doesn't exercise, you know, misappropriation of funds, for example, amongst other things. The second thing we learned is that if I have a group of, a collective of 10 farmers, then I can create a federation of that collective. A hundred of such make a thousand. A thousand of such group makes 10,000. And by this group coming together as a network of collectives, I can still have micro businesses, nano business units that are working, but collectively across the country, I could be bigger than Amul. The beauty, if some of you remember your history, the, you know, the word citizen comes from the member of a city. Right? So the first countries were city-states. So if you go to Athens and Sparta, uh, there was no indirect franchise. Every single thing, every decision, everybody came together and voted on it. So it, you'd know, you didn't have an elected representative. The cities were so small because people could come together and then people could vote on every single thing, road banayenge ki nahi banayenge, every citizen should come, could come together. And in small groups, that's possible. The third thing, people also often talk about capacity building and so on and so forth. And we say, no, you build an ecosystems. People will learn themselves. You create opportunity ecosystems. So, a movie dekhi thi, 20-25 years called Field of Dreams. So the hero there used to get a dream where players, baseball players in this case, imagine cricket players, who had died 100 years back, uske dream mein aake bolte te ki, make a field, we want to play again. There are no playing fields in heaven. So we want to play again. And people obviously used to think he's mad. Finally, usko sapne mein aane laga this phrase, Build it and they will come. And that's become a big management jargon today that you build the ecosystem, people will come. 
and uh, he builds it and they will come in the you know the last scene of the movie everybody comes and they play and all of that but the point is that we learned that you build these ecosystems of buyers suppliers logistics providers finances knowledge providers sales partners you do that upfront investment and these groups will come because people are smart people you keep your business model small jo ek gaon ka panch aadmi milke something if they can do anything more complex which five people in a village cannot come together and do is not the right business model for the collective so you do that you create the ecosystem they will come and they will succeed and as they succeed you connect them to each other and that's where you will get a network of collective so that's been our experience sure uh, so two three things that uh, we would like you to go into details which is um how small is beautiful of course but um question ye bhi aata hai kyunki csr fraternity bhi yahan par hai ki scale to hai nahi aapka aap wo 40 kisanon ke sath kaam kar rahe hain hame to 40000 ke sath karna hai 4 lakh ke sath karna hai usko hum apan kaise dekhte hain aur ye inke baad aur then comes the sustainability so how do you address that thing what is the message you would like to give वाजपेयी जी आप आप प्लीज जेके इंडस्ट्री जेके टायर पे जो आप सी एस आर के माध्यम से कर रहे हैं उसमें कलेक्टिव्स को आप कैसे देख रहे हैं कैसे इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हैं या कैसे कम्युनिटीज को सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं प्लीज थैंक यू थैंक यू संजय जी एंड वेरी वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू Uh, really it's a privilege to be here and to see such a bright faces uh, uh, it's really good uh, uh, something uh, sanjay ji what you have asked that basically why collectivization this is actually required so if i just share actually just few data point in a country like india where actually 85% farmers they are small and marginal farmers less than 2 hectares of holding and these farmers they are having you know uh, control over just 47% of the land so by this perhaps the overall importance of this thing or this session that becomes actually very you know okay, why this thing is actually required so this is one uh, in jk tire because we are having we are a manufacturing based company and we are having our presence in one of the very uh, remote areas as well so one case study definitely i would like to share and because all of you uh you people are already you know a lot of experience you have but whatever experience we are having that definitely we would like to uh, share with you so uh, one of our plant which is actually in, in nearby morena morena madhya pradesh and uh, because sanjay ji is also coming from the nearby area so he might also be he can also put some light about and all of you must be very much aware that morena is known for all the wrong reasons not for the good reasons as such and when actually we were struggling what to do so uh, it was something one one thing was definitely uh, actually in our mind that whatever we do uh, uh, first of all that area uh, very much agriculture based then education wise again you know it's very uh, backward so something in case you have to take up some intervention it has to be something like where something not very alien you are going to introduce so this is what actually we have thought out when the initial uh, uh, need assessment and this all they have happened so few things which have come up that the livestock or the animals which are there uh, they are actually you know the overall production or productivity of those animals i am talking about cows and buffaloes that is very less and just by a very small intervention through the breed improve, improvement you can actually bring lot of changes and here you are not going to change anything it is just one technology which you have actually uh, enabled there and now people the good thing is because uh, this uh, project we have implemented with the uh, jk trust and uh, mr ram bhatnagar I, as i can see him he is also here so uh, uh, definitely he will also uh, uh, you people can discuss the things with him so when we have uh, uh, the idea has come up so first thing was that it must be with the group of the people it may not be just in isolation so first of all the people who are interested in a village they have to be formed into the groups and this is what actually the collectivization thing that has come up 
we started the things, uh, started our journey around five years back. And if I just give you a few uh, actually snippets of that, in the last five years, we might have put up around one crore rupee in that project. And through that project, when actually we have recently, we have gone ahead with the uh, impact assessment study that how actually it has benefited and impacted the lives of the people. So one thing has come up that there is a social return on investment of one is to 20 means the one rupee which we have put up has actually given 20 rupees to the uh, local people. How actually? First of all, actually you have improved the value of the livestock. The livestock or the cow, which used to be of local cow, which is yielding two, three, three liters or four liters of milk, and its value is around five to 10,000 rupees. Now actually when it is giving you around 10 liters or 12 liters of milk or 15 liters of milk, actually the value of that, that is around 30, 40,000 rupees. So around 10, 15 crore rupees value add in those 50 villages I'm just talking about. Second thing, the milk production which has increased. So once that value, when actually it has been calculated, it comes, it comes around three to four crore rupees per year. And something very important that as soon as we are coming out, these things will remain with the community. That ecosystem has been developed. Those people, they have been actually made aware, their capacities have been built and they are actually continuing with that. And something very important, perhaps uh, uh, I think uh, later that thing may also come up, that we have taken that thing, uh, 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 we have collaborated with other agencies also just to take that thing forward. So with this, I'll be ending and we'll get yeah, it. Like, you didn't tell us intervention. Kya tha. Wo intervention was AI. Artificial insemination ke se productivity ko enhance karna aur local youth ko tayar kiya. To ye, uh, hum log directly kaam nahi kar rahe hai, saath pe nahi kar rahe hai. But I, I have seen those, uh, those local guys providing those services and they earn the end of the month 6-7,000 rupees. So besides, uh, you know, having the direct impact of enhancing the value of the livestock and for the farmers, but you are also creating the jobs for the local youth. Sajaji, just uh, actually one thing I would uh, like to add up because this is very valid thing uh, which you have raised. Uh, if I talk about the people who, whose capacities have been built and who are actually providing services, they are earning 20 to 25,000 rupees in a month, while the farmers who are there, uh, just calculate one thing, if you are having a cow that is giving you 3 liters of milk, and if you have a cow which is giving around 12 liters of milk, when actually our chairman, he was visiting and he has asked that farmer, ki, okay, now it is 14,000 rupees. Initially, it was 4, 000, uh, 4 liters only. So total comes 10 liters additional, 30 rupees. It is 300 rupees per day, 9,000 rupees in a month. And actually, it becomes 1,8,000 like in a year. So something like, you know, that person has come out of the poverty line. Something like that. So what we will do with you is that Long term में आपने कैसे सोचा क्योंकि CSR में भी कई बार ये limitations आ जाती हैं कि three to five years के engagement में किस तरीके से जाया जाए और that requires not only the orientation towards having a long term vision but also uh, putting up our putting up our resources in a long term basis like three to five years का investment आपको चाहिए um, coming back to uh, you आपने जो ecosystems की बात की तो उस ecosystem में जब आप बात कर रहे हैं तो वो इरिगेशन की ही बात नहीं है, वो एसएचजीस की ही बात नहीं है, उसपे कुछ और कंपोनेंट्स थे, जिसपे आपने शायद इन्वेस्टमेंट किया, कम्युनिटी का पार्टिसिपेशन भी उसपे एंश्योर कर रहे हैं आप, साथ में आपने शायद सर्विस प्रोवाइडर के बारे में भी कुछ बताना चाह रहे थे आप उसमें, तो प कि हम केवल आइसोलेशन में एक इंटरवेंशन को करते हैं करने जा रहे हैं या आप पूरे इकोसिस्टम में इन्वेस्टमेंट के लिए सोचते हैं? I think for when we are talking about this socio-economic development, definitely you know none of the like you know in a single organization doesn't have you know the all the competencies because it's a complex system, correct? So our partner, let's say Pradhan, they are experts in livelihood, but it also requires a technology intervention, which is like you know solar irrigation. That is where our as a technology leader that is our expertise. So first, we build the capacity of the NGO, you know, the whole team, you know, how to do a survey in the village to understand the need of, 
you know the water how you know how it has to be so a detailed training was done for the ngo staffs okay that was the first thing the second the like you know okay you install the solar irrigation how it will be operated because you cannot send somebody engineer or even a technician from delhi to gumla agar kuch kharab ho gaya you know so we have to build you know the capacity of those local you know youth or in fact in this case the women are trained you know to become operator of like you know the solar irrigation pumps okay and what about maintenance because anything even a car we have the best cars you know do teen matlab do teen bar to saal mein nahi padta hai correct so here also you know to do that maintenance you know we need to build local capacity so we have trained again you know the youth from those area on how to do the maintenance and even like you know some critical maintenance so that you know because imagine in you know, a farmer you know in a summer season if the pump you know does not work for 3 days their whole crop will fail because i remember like you know in during this covid we were not able to send some you know technicians and there was some problem in the very remote part we have to come, i have to assure the like you know the villagers you know all the women like you know our crop laga tha abhi you know jal gaya hai so we have to take on a video call you know we try to do it but i think this capacity of building up the, like you know the local youth or uh, you know the let's say local people is very very important you know i think that is all you need to look at the overall ecosystem so yeah i'm um, just look i was looking at that watch as well <laughs> so um, but mai ek aur point pe aapke sath aana chahta but anyway we can discuss that thing because we have to open up the uh, you know house for the discussions as well so please you also go ahead with uh, how you ensure this participation of women from uh, production to procurement to validation to market yeah. kis notes mein kaise kisi ek note mein bhi agar aap share kar paaye Uh, how जी. challenging was it or uh, why is it needed at, you know in any way ji ji so uh, industry has developed a model it's called the 6c model framework uh, one which is construct which you set up uh, the the you know the unit construct also includes professional management teams who will be working with women on ground uh, till they are sustained by themselves and then they are able to take, take on the roles uh, second is of course capacity building Uh, which is split into soft skills hard skills starting from entrepreneurial training shg leaders training because shg leaders are mandated to take responsibility for the deliverables of those 10 women who come under them right uh, then there is a uh, you know we have about 20 uh, shgs who fold into a, uh, a mbt a mutual beneficiary trust then we have mutual beneficiary trust training trainers i mean those people also get trained and then you have financial literacy and all the other things which come in and then we have create which is the design element of whatever they are getting into r and d which gets into that then we have channel which is basically connect to markets and what are the things which you require to make your products marketable that is quality and in time and then you have cap uh, uh, capital which is seed capital and then goes into working capital requirements how do you raise money how do you sustain the businesses and last is connect where uh, we working even with prashant on that where you see how the technology can feed into the entire system and you know drive the entire thing so this is a 6c model this is a framework which we have built in we have experts in each of them now the challenge essentially is when you try to do this with various aspects which you uh, you know are not prepared for or you are prepared for it but not these are all aspects which you have to learn on the go so while 80% of the program is basically uh, you know replicable Uh, there is always customization is always uh, aspects which come out of the value chains come out of the regions which you work in come out of the uh, the uh, literacy levels of the women in various places so these are the challenges which we keep on going through so so And what i hear you saying is that um, the investment part in the capacities of the the women who yes. are involved in do yes. different nodes yeah. has to be in a long term basis it's a, it has to be on a long term and repeated over and over again because see uh, they have never we have taken women out of their homes out of an uh, enrega or you know out of various places and telling them aapko business chalana you know so it takes a lot of time it, it takes a, a lot of uh, repeated uh, you know experience whenever they fall we have to be standing right there 
ये होता है कम बैक टू द नेक्स्ट वन एंड दैट्स हाउ यू बिल्ड दीज इको सिस्टमिक फ्रेमवर्क दैट यू कॉन्स्टेंटली वर्क विद दम ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड देन वेन दे आर एबल टू रन इट ऑन देयर ओन देन वी मूव आउट एंड वी प्ले अ मोर कैथलेटिक रोल एंड मोर एनहैंसड रोल इन दैट प्रोसेस क्वेश्चन तो था मेरे पास लेकिन वो टाइम की वजह से मैं रोकना पड़ रहा है मुझे कि इको सिस्टम बिल्डिंग के लिए फिर वो तीन महीने में कैसे हम करेंगे छः महीने में कैसे करेंगे क्योंकि एक साल में कैसे करेंगे एनीवे या इसके स्केल अप एंड सस्टेनेबिलिटी विद प्रशांत जी हाँ तो आप स्केल और सस्टेनेबिलिटी की बात कर रहे हैं आई वुड लाइक टू रिवर्स द ऑर्डर सस्टेनेबिलिटी बिफोर स्केल और आई थिंक दैट्स वन की मैसेज आई लाइक टू लीव विद एवरीबडी दैट्स वट आई लर्न ऑल्सो इन माई एक्सपीरियंस ऑल्सो एज अ ह्यूमन बींग मैं बचपन में बहुत बीमार पड़ता था एंड इट्स एवरी ईयर टीचर यूज टू आस्क की बेटा इस बार क्या तुम्हें हुआ सो टू दी एक्सटेंड दैट यू नो वेन आई मीट माई मॉम नाओ आई स्टिल से सॉरी मैंने बहुत परेशानी की बट आई समाउ सवाइव एंड दैट्स वाई आई एम एबल टू डू वट एवर आई एम ट्राइंग टू डू नाउ सो दिस होल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्केल आई थिंक कैन नॉट बी पुट बिफोर सस्टेनेबिलिटी वन ऑफ द थिंग्स हाउ वी हैव ट्राइड टू अप्रोच इट is by building ready to use micro business models and configuring that entire business model in apps down to pnl down to input output down to cash flow down to wastage so when somebody is saying ki main abhi ek 10 uh, goat ka ek goatry dalunga ya 150 chicken ki main ek poultry dalunga ya main mustard oil business mein jaunga up front the moment they do that we are able to say this is what your three year cash flow will look like this is your break even point this is the amount of input you need to buy this is the labor you will need etc and we work with experts to digitize these models so now from day one we have a basis to tell the collective how to monitor your own business performance and if things are not going right then let's sit around the table and figure out karna kya hai you can't keep burning cash so that's how we've tried to approach sustainability scale comes automatically for that unit abhi 10 mahilaye hain kal 12 hongi parso 16 hongi but more importantly scale comes from networks so if you look at today around the platform businesses so look at uber to 30 40 uh, uh, lakh gaadiyan across the country are on the uber platform that scale now how is it getting built building networks is very expensive building ecosystems is very expensive so to those of you who are funders here the request is when you sit down with the people you are funding a you're funding livelihood you're not funding another intervention like vaccination or something where sustainability is not the issue that's not a service livelihood is about a business model about an economic model to get down to sustainability and do upfront investments in building networks one of the things we have done suppose we work with 100 ngos whatever buyers sellers logistics providers machinery manufacturers come on the platform via the actions of one ngo are available to everybody people have this tendency to say mera kisan mera buyer so you can never compete within the big guys right so you have to also understand who are you competing against if you are trying to sell mustard oil you are competing against dhara mustard oil or you are competing against fortune mustard oil so you got to understand that you don't have your farmer doesn't have the purchasing power the financial withal so sharing in the network becomes so much important that brings down the cost of building your network and scale will come from the network scale will not come from an individual है ना वो तो बचपन से ही सब रहा है ये कनेक्टेड इज इम्पॉर्टेंट यूनाइटेड वी स्टैंड एंड ऑल ऑफ द गुड स्टफ इन इट्स ट्रू सो एन जी ओ वन विल ब्रिंग फाइव बायर्स एन जी ओ टू विल ब्रिंग फाइव बायर्स एंड द फर्स्ट वन लैक एन जी ओज कलेक्टिवली विल ब्रिंग फाइव लैक बायर्स एंड नाउ ऑल ऑफ असर यू रियलाइज कि आपका एवरी फार्मर इन द कंट्री हैज एक्सेस टू फाइव लैक बायर्स एंड सेम ऑन सप्लाई साइड सो दैट्स वेर स्केल विल कम फ्रॉम या सो मेरा मेरा फार्मर तेरा फार्मर वाला जो बात है वो गांव के अंदर भी है कि अगर कोई 
प्रोजेक्ट में काम कर रहे हैं कोई सी एस आर के माध्यम से काम कर रहे हैं उसके आसपास में कर रहे हैं तो उसमें यह भी होता है कि दूसरा सी एस आर यहाँ पर कैसे आ गया दूसरी फिलंथ्रोपी यहाँ पर कैसे आ गई तो वो गाँव भी अभी तो उस तरीके से हो गया कि भाई मेरा गाँव है ये मेरे गाँव पर तो दूसरा आदमी आना ही नहीं चाहिए तो कोलेब्रेशन पार्टनरशिप जो आपने अभी बात की तो मैं तो बोलने वाला था कि आपने तो पार्टनरशिप में घुस गए आप तो कॉन्ट्रेक्टरशिप में क्यों नहीं गए तो एन के साथ तो कॉन्ट्रेक्टरशिप करना चाहते हैं लोग कि भाई आई एम गिविंग यू सिक्स मंथ्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स वन ईयर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और टू इयर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यू डू दिस थिंग एंड फॉगेट अबाउट यू नो सस्टेनेबिलिटी स्केलेबिलिटी बट वो पार्टनरशिप में आप बोल रहे हैं कि उनकी भी कैपेसिटीज बिल्ड करेंगे महिलाओं की भी कैपेसिटीज बिल्ड करेंगे आप इंस्टीट्यूशन को भी बिल्ड करेंगे सो दैट इज अबाउट एप्रिशिएटिंग दी um expertise being brought up on the table by all the stakeholders together usi tarike se networking aur iski baat jo aap collaboration ki baat kar rahe hain so my request to those of you who are funders or influencers my request would be to actually mandate it as part of your engagement that your civil society partners work with open data that whatever will be done will be shareable with the broader community in that geography in the country that's the only way if you want to fight it's a economic battle you are fighting we are about livelihood it's about income and money is involved that's the only way to fight that so very quickly um anupam ji uh, before we also open up i can for very well sanjay ji i can they would like to spend <laughs> sanjay ji i can very well see time is up it is already uh, uh, written here uh, but something actually very interesting what you uh, mentioned Uh, my uh, uh, point to that one is ki whenever there is a marriage and you know those people they might be 25 years old uh, both of them uh, i'm just considering that marriage they are having their different thought process and this all similar thing is about corporate and when they are actually engaging uh, one ngo they are partnering uh, partnering with some ngo the way in the marriages we do some compromises ki सब कुछ मेरी सुनो कुछ उनकी सुनो समथिंग लाइक दैट शुड आल्सो बी कोलोब्रेशन यस सो इट हैज टू बी जस्ट टू क्विक पॉइंट्स फ्रॉम माय साइड कि इन केस वी हैव टू डू एनी प्रोजेक्ट इधर वी आर गोइंग फॉर अ प्रोजेक्ट और वी आर गोइंग जस्ट फॉर अ कलेक्टिवाइजेशन और फॉर्मिंग अ ग्रुप सो आई थिंक इन बोथ द प्रोसेस इट हैज टू बी लाइक ऑफ द पीपल फॉर द पीपल बाय द पीपल इन केस वी आर फॉलोइंग दिस थिंग it is going to be successful and i am talking about both for the both the things uh, just one example i can quote one project on floriculture we have initiated in rajasthan kakroli but that project perhaps i cannot implement at morena or madhya pradesh where actually i was discussing with you uh, one more project on the livestock development so that is one second point on collaborations i know i think many of you would say ki there are so many pain points even for corporates it is really difficult when other corporate comes then actually we are very much concerned about the branding we are also concerned about what will happen actually when we are going to make the board how jk tire will figure how some other company will figure where other i know these issues are there but collaborations actually they are must and what actually uh, my fellow panelists they have also mentioned in case we have to scale up definitely the project has to be sustainable then only you can scale it up you have to have these uh, collaborations not you know jk tire or snider electric not in the all over india they can do you have to have some collaborations and you have to accordingly you know and then you have to make certain compromises as well so just two quick points from thank, thank you, you very much, much.